let's uh, do a talk on actually um, the um, E prize or the E singularity prize for flattening and providing again the tools for um, making learning accessible to all. Now, E singularity, let me tell, talk about what E singularity is. E singularity is the point, the moment, the E singularity, the education singularity, is the point when um, education 3.0 becomes a reality. Now, you're saying, what's well, education 3.0? If you search the web for education 3.0, you get a lot of weird freaking answers, long, convoluted, and, you know, very complicated. Education 3.0 simply is education driven on smart devices by autonomous learning software solutions. Okay? Education 3.0 basically is this. It removes the need of schools and what we think of traditional teachers, what I call sage on the stage, um, as the, the, the vehicle for learning. And in its place, takes the teacher, but in a video format, um, use augmented reality, uses various different technologies, and autonomously, and autonomously basically is a fancy word for AI, right? Uh, the DARPA Autonomous Vehicle Prize basically is a car that can drive itself. So an, an autonomous learning solution basically is a learning solution that drives itself. You don't need a teacher behind it. And what it does is it monitors the participant and basically drives and pushes the correct and the appropriate educational content to that end user using a combination of incentives and games in order to keep the learner coming back for more and prizes and so on. So uh, ALS, or Autonomous Learning Solutions, is the future of education. Now you've got to think, now I've been, you know, I've been thinking about this since 2001 and I founded eduit.org in 2001 um, as a way to provide, you know, as a way to explore and develop this and you know, again, back in 2001, what I'm describing to you right now was, 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 was heard as heresy. And even up to like three years ago, and you know, or actually four years, three years ago, people laughed at it. However, today, my idea of autonomous learning solutions, uh, education being driven by AI, is now being seriously considered. And in case in point, you know, I have managed the E3O group, Education 3.0 group, on LinkedIn. With over, it has close to 400 members now. All of them very substantial individuals, leaders within the education and, and software community. Um, the idea of ALS driven solutions is happening, and it's happening in medicine. Um, and I'll give you an example of that. You're going to see basically. Uh, in, uh, autonomous software that's going to monitor your vital signs, it's going to monitor your blood chemistry, and it's going to basically provide feedback to you and recommendations on a very simple level to go see a doctor or not. You know, autonomous learning or autonomous solutions are in, you know, fly the F20, F22 or whatever, the F21, whatever. All the, the new supersonic airplanes have basically AI driving and taking over most of the functionality, all right? You're going to see autonomous solutions in business, and you're already seen in business. One of the first examples of autonomous solutions um, is Siri. Siri is a platform for the iPhone that is an autonomous agent as, a, as an assistant that helps you find things that you need. Um, it takes your location in consideration, um, you know, um, and it searches. Now, it's very rudimentary, and ultimately there's a lot more to that platform that could be released. Um, you know, you're seeing things like um, Netflix and Pandora and all these things that are basically monitoring, gaining information or metadata on your, your habits. As, as software understands you better, right, um, and has that data to apply, and autonomous learning software is no different, then ultimately it can deliver and direct the appropriate learning material to you. I'll give you another example. This is something that I actually shared with Siri, and maybe I think this is the reason why Apple bought Siri. And I wrote to the CEO or one of the founders of Siri and told him this. I said, you know what? 
you know, Apple has now over 50,000 education apps, but they're useless. I can't find it. I don't know how to, you know, get to them or whatever. I don't know whether they're good or not. The search mechanism for, you know, for these apps is just useless. Siri would be an invaluable tool as an app finder, okay? Number one, you know, it could learn my habits of what kind of apps that I like to basically use and play, how often, and ultimately go out and find those apps that are similar to those apps by user ratings and everything else. In a way, it becomes a Netflix for finding those you know, uh, apps. And I could even set up, say, please send me recommendations once a day, once a week, whatever. Um, also, Siri, even more importantly, could be actually become the first uh, a to very rudimentary autonomous learning solution. Very rudimentary. And this is how it would work on the iPhone and other, or, the, or it could be work on the Android. How it could work is this, is that basically it runs behind all my apps, monitoring my usage of those apps. Um, and intelligently, basically, or, or keeping track of where I leave off, so when I go back to it, so let's say Tommy is, you know, using the, his 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 eye eye touch, and um, he basically uses an app for a while, and then he closes it. When he opens it again, instead of it restarting from one from the beginning, as all the apps do, what it does is it picks up from where he left off. Ingenious idea. What is that? Pick up from where he left off. Not only that, it could even test him on previous material very quickly. Instead of you know doing this, okay, can you do this? Can you do this? Okay, can can can. And then what it can also do is actually look for kind of linkage material that may be found in different apps and other apps that actually links that content to another and actually pulls that up and tests them in a different way using these educational games, right? So Siri potentially could do this. This isn't. This takes some, you know, some software writing, um, you know, writing the app. I mean, it's it's rather in depth. Is it impossible? Definitely not. Okay. May, could it cost some money? Sure. But what would be the return? Significant. So, autonomous learning prize is simple. The autonomous learning prize or the E prize simply does this. We establish a fund. A fund that I want to establish is $100 million. And $100 million simply is this, is that the, whatever percentage of the money you put into the fund is the percentage of the return that you get from the net profits. So if it's $100 million, you put a million dollars in, you basically get 1% of the net profits from all technologies that are, that are, um, that are basically derived, modified, um, and uh, put out there that actually create. And, and really, my vision is this. I think basically K through, you know, K through 20, or maybe not even K through 20, but let's say K through eight education right now should be free and accessible to all. Everyone should be able to read. Everyone should have a basic science, math, science, language arts. Um, everyone should be able to learn English, learn different languages. Should have those. You know, we should provide that for free on smart devices. And anything else apart from that, let's say if you want an MCSC, if you want to get a certification degree, if you want all of this stuff, we would charge, right?